Hello, comedian Warris. Uh, yes, sir. How you doing? I'm good. Good, good, good. Good to have you. Good to have you. How's your day been? Oh, uh, it's been great. Good. Inside. Good, good. We uh, we're doing okay. We're taking it easy, and um, yeah, yeah. We're just excited to have you. So, thanks for making time to um, show up. We appreciate you. Just taking it yeah. easy. Yeah. Good. Good. I'm actually doing nothing. I'm chilling. That's good. You, man. <laughs> doing nothing and chilling is a luxury. So, I uh, I don't tell you. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah, I was. So um, we're we're gonna have this uh, conversation about you and your career and um, what's new with you and what's up with the future and all that cool stuff. So we're speaking to Abdul Waris Umaru, known as Comedian Waris. He is a Ghanaian comedian, actor, and entertainer, and recently he's um, delved into music which he's going to tell us more about. Comedian Waris was born in Kumasi, um, in Ghana. His father is Umaru Ibrahim. He had his primary education at Kinsue School and went on to Odogono Senior High School, which is also in Ghana. His tertiary education was at Top Media School, where he graduated in 2014. So he's actually had a stint in radio as well. So yeah, um, as far as his career is concerned, um, Comedian Waris um, has worked um, as an intern at both Top FM and Rainbow Radio. He's uh, been a sound engineer. He was a sound engineer there. Um, he later on moved to Channel 5 TV in that same 2014 year and a year later in 2015 he worked at Ecstasy Entertainment as a stand-up comedian and personal assistant to award-winning comedian DKB. Um, he established the Waris Foundation which occasionally donates to people living on the streets in Ghana and that is the intro. Comedian Waris. Yes sir. Tell us um, when did you start realizing your passion for comedy? Because I, you know, from your intro, it's obvious that you had done some media work. What caused the branch from that into comedy? Well, um, I think comedy wasn't a thing that I wanted to do, but it just came out like something that. I needed to do. You know, I never dreamt of doing it. It just it just happened. I thought doing it for a while and being I mean perfect, I'll be able to go much further than uh, actually give, being a scriptwriter for another person or a ghostwriter or telling some other person to do it. Got you. So I actually saw the potentials and then I worked on it. And then it worked for me. So you were actually writing scripts for others to um, do comedy and over the over the time you decided that you'd give it a shot yourself yeah so i was actually doing something like that it happened that it got to a point where i was like yo let me just try this script and see and then it worked out do you remember when your first big stage audience was and how it felt for you my first big stage audience was at um, Laugh Line Comedy Show at um, Accra Mall. What year was this? This was somewhere in 2015, earlier when I started comedy. Huh. I saw a crowd that I never, I've never met. It was like, yo, you've never met this group of people. Sit down, wait for you to do something. So well, that's interesting. Were they a tough crowd? <laughs> for for them for the starter, it was a tough crowd because I didn't expect it that uh, uh, I mean I I would be able to say anything that like to get them smile or something. Right, right, right. 
were you were you nervous were you excited were you scared how was it like uh, i was nervous i wasn't that's interesting but you've had um big shows you've um you've had bigger audience than that i'm sure um how how are you building your confidence as you get better and better well um being nervous is a thing it's part of comedy you understand when you are doing a show and you are not nervous or something it doesn't feel right it doesn't feel like you are ready for it so for being confident on the stage is a thing is it's something that we've all been doing um over time but uh being nervous i realize it's, it's something that is going to be part of us as an artist or as being an artist for some time do you uh, have uh, any special thing that you do to warm up before you get on stage any ritual any tradition I pray. I pray a lot. I pray a lot when I'm, I'm about to go on stage. So you're you're a man of faith then. Uh, yeah, I'm a man of faith. I believe in God. When you when you look at the uh, Ghana comedy scene, how do you see your role in there? For Ghana comedy, well, it's doing it's doing well on its own when it comes to uh, the stand up comedy and then the skate making. But then uh, I thought waiting for other people before you would be able to do something is something that you can't do in Ghana unless you you alone you want to do your own thing. So uh, I think comedy, my role, I, I mean, I've, I've had a good impact. I've, I've done a lot to, for people to also say that, yeah, in Ghana we have comedians. But then I, I sometimes think about it and I feel like it's not enough. I need to overdo. So I'm still looking forward to the future, making bigger impacts to make Ghana comedy or put them on the map. That's interesting. Um, I like how you self-motivate and you challenge yourself to be better and do better. Um, speaking of Ghana comedy, um, are there... Um, specific Ghanaian comedians who inspire you, whose work you admire? Yeah, a lot of them. I, I have people like Obi and Bosa. You see, I actually take inspiration from every other comedian. You put them together and then how you can make something unique out of everybody's strength. So, uh, I have Obi and Bosa, Lexi, Jacinta, DKB, there are some other upcoming comedians that I also look up to. Like I actually look at their their craft and I'm like, yo, I like this style and all that. What about um outside Ghana? Anyone in particular? <laughs> yeah, for outside Ghana, uh, I've watched performances from. You see, I, I like Jimmy Fox. I like how. Uh, he acts, and then I watch some comedians outside, like Uganda. We have Salvador Patrick, Patrick Salvador, and then when you come to America, I have like three comedians: Godfrey, Godfrey the comedian, and then uh, there's this lady I've forgotten her name. She is a Ghanaian, actually. And she's performed in uh, Comedy Central and all that. I've forgotten her name. I recently connected to a Mexican, and then the, the 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 likes of Kevin Hart or AJ Jamal and then XJ Dave Chappelle. They are all there. We, I learned from all of them. Nice. I love how you keep um, your options, you know, open and you know yeah. your points of motivation and inspiration, you know very um, versatile um you um mentioned the fact that you learned from all of them um yes. what are uh, or what is in your opinion the most useful lesson that you learned as a comedian that has really helped shape your craft uh, don't expect anything in return when you do good as a comedian or yeah, uh, uh, when you're coming up, 
you don't have to be expecting. I, I think that thing has really helped me as much as I'm still working on it. You know, sometimes you do, you meet people in your career, you feel like, yo, these guys are my friends, these guys are my this. You try to get deals and you try to put them on or other stuff. Sometimes you expect them to do something to pay you back. All those stuff. So it comes in all forms. Whether money, whether someone has to pay you or any other thing that they are not paying you. I feel uh, as an artist, sometimes like complaining destroys, like people don't expect you to always be complaining about certain things. And when you keep expecting, that is when you feel bad and you feel like you need to complain, you need to talk, you need to let people know this is, this is what happened. So I think that attitude of not expecting uh, had, is really helping. It, uh, it has really helped me. I only do what I have to do and then I don't expect anyone to, to come back and tell me why is this is it, you want this or you got this or I have to pay you this or pay you that. So I think that that is that is one thing. I I, I like that. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful <laughs> thing. It makes people wonder why you have not asked when you have to. Right, right. You you just stay focused to the craft, stay true yeah. to your yourself, be authentic. Don't expect too much, but yeah. don't be afraid to deliver too much. Yeah. That's that's yeah. a that's a good that's a good tip. I mean, it's a, it's a tip that probably would um, uh, would apply generally in life because expectations sometimes tend to breed disappointments. So yeah, sure. That's, sure. that's 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 thanks thanks a lot for sharing that. Tell us um right. tell us about some of your brands. Well, I'm 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 a brand influencer for now for flora disposable tissues. They manufacture tissues for people to use, and those tissues are disposable. This to uh, erase the mentality of using handkerchief to wipe and wipe over and wipe over and wipe over. So uh, that is the company I work with. Nice. And where are they located? This flora tissue. Uh, look, their company is, is located at, at Tema. While I read your introduction, I mentioned the fact that um, you um, have delved into music as well. Um, tell us a little bit about that. But um, before you do, let me just refresh listeners. Um, we're speaking to Abdul Waris Umaru. Um, he's um, known as Comedian Waris. He's a Ghanaian comedian, actor, entertainer, and um, recently a musician as well and a brand influencer. So. Um, over to you, Mr. Waris. Yeah, I actually uh, tried the drill stuff. See, I realized people were doing the drill. And then people, uh, I, I like the drill. I like how they use the drill beats to they sing on it. So I was like, yo, I have to, I have to also jump on one of them. But then uh, before that, I have a series, Agenda Boys. And I wanted to drop. So because I wanted the copyright song by myself, I had to sing uh, Agenda Boys song and use it for that. This is like your first attempt at music? Yeah, yeah. And I did that with uh, an artist called Exodus Links and Wuta. Okay. Wuta Kobe. Okay. And then the producer is Cash too. You, you made mention of Agenda Boys. Uh, I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, Agenda Voice is a TV series and it's a TV and YouTube series where uh, two guys living in a compound house are actually unemployed and very useless and then they keep disturbing every lady that comes to the house. It's actually a funny uh, series where at every uh, at the end of every series, you you actually have to learn a lesson. Well, how has the first season been received? Well, it's, it's because it's a it's a good good content. I whatever, however it has been received, I feel at least it, it has more room to to go. It, has, it can do better. 
they understand. Right. But then it's, it's a very received word, and I appreciate uh, everyone who, I mean, who did, who watched this and everything. Cool, cool. When you um when when you look into the future, um, you've been involved with some music as well. You mentioned the fact that you like drill, and so you um dropped yeah. your first single, which is um um in that line with drill featuring um Kobe Uta, um yeah, and um you have this skit Agenda Boys, which you feel yeah. like um it's doing well in your opinion, um yeah. Um, do you see yourself um, jumping from, you know, doing skits to actually um, starring in movies? Is that something you, you, you know, you would consider or entertain along the line? Uh, you see, I, I, I'm, I like the create. I like to be creative and I like to be everywhere, to be doing the music, acting and doing stand up and all that. But then I don't think uh, I would ever uh, move from my lane as a stand-up comedian, which is my major, or any other thing. I think I'll keep doing the stand-up comedy. Every, everything I'm doing is just a side stuff. <laughs> Staying true to the uh, comedy then. <laughs> That's interesting. Now, uh, speaking of um, comedy, uh, if you don't mind, I would like to play one of your um shows just for a minute um okay. and we'll, we'll talk about that and you know our economy is very hard it's hard to understand that we wanted to shoot a music video with a madman we got it down we saw a madman man we want to shoot a music video can you help us because i guess he has a manager <laughs> No, that that was quite interesting. Um, uh, th what I found intriguing was the fact that um, uh, the madman said he has a manager. Where, where do you where do you come up with yeah. stuff like that? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think that is one of my first jokes that I did some some years back. Right. Um, you um, you have a air slot on a Ghanaian TV station, I believe it's. Uh, Kantanka, tell us a little bit about yeah. that one. Um, I'm actually showing Agenda Boys on Kantanka TV, and that is the partnership with them. That is what you see as me joining Kantanka TV. Any plans yeah. to um, be become a, uh, a presenter, a host, given that you're multi-talented? Um, <laughs> well, I, I've been a, a host before, but then this this isn't about being a host. I've been a host before September and all that when I was working at a TV station. What do you what do you want as far as your um, comedy career is concerned? And also, this is a twofold question: as far as your humanitarian um, um, part is concerned, where you do a lot of charity work and all that. Well. I want to, you see, the dream is to, is not to always entertain people, like make them laugh and all that, but then we should get to the point where we have a lot of things that can actually make people feel okay, because I feel that uh, making someone laugh is, is not enough. Maybe their problems is bigger. If you can touch it and then solve it, it will, it will end them in um, endless happiness. And so the, the, that, that brings about the humanitarian stuff. So we are hoping that uh, we can get to a point where we can have a bigger team, where we, we have people where, I mean, people joining the team as comedians, as part of us, let's say an entertainment group or a label for people to also join and then, help other people, creating an academy and all that. I think that is what we have, I'm actually thinking of with my team. So just ex expanding, building a bigger team, but also being yeah. able to, you know, um, impact society beyond comedy through your humanitarian, yeah. you know, um, yeah. 
work in a project. That's 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 an amazing you know ambition to have. Um, how how do people connect with you? I mean, on social media. My DM is open, and there are emails and phone phone numbers where they can call and talk to my management. Folks, you've been listening to me. My name is Oral Ufuri. Talk to Comedian Waris on hashtag the African Dream Clubhouse Edition. Comedian um, Waris is um, a Ghanaian comedian, actor, entertainer, musician, philanthropist, and um, brand influencer. Um, he is based in Ghana right now, but you can connect with him on social media where he is Comedian Waris. W-A-R-I-S on all major platforms, including Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Mr. Waris, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Yes, sir. Before we leave you, um, any last words? I'm not dying yet. Maybe later when I'm about to die. <laughs> no last words for we'll Comedian Waris. Be so, so. Well, hey. Um, thank you so much. 